Welcome back to our series about Stories, the amazing writing application for both macOS and iOS. I'm not being paid to say this, by the way. And this video is about uh, the writing tools that you have at your hand that make your writing, your creative writing, a lot easier than it would be without them. And this is what sets Stories apart from its competitors, such as Word and Pages. So uh, let's have a look at how this works. I'm going to switch back into my single editor view and I'm going to work on my test manuscript here. Uh, I'm going to delete what we've got here so far because it kind of doesn't really... Well, actually, I might as well, I might as well leave it in place here. So the first writing tool that I'd like, you in, like to introduce you to is um, this little guy here, which is a section. And this little guy up here, which is a chapter. So the way this works is if you open that disclosure triangle next to the document you're working on, then you see that currently I have one chapter in here. And if I expand that as well, I can see that I have two sections here. One's called section one, which is this one here. And one is just called untitled section. Do you know what? And to make it a little bit easier for us to understand what's going on, I'm going to delete the notebook entry because that was just a demo here. So this is what I have right now. Uh, one chapter and the chapter has two sections. And uh, the section is separated by this little hash icon here. The way this works is if I go to the bottom of the page, bottom of the document, in fact, let me just uh, switch over here to layout, uh, page layout, so I can see my pages. Uh, then if I were to hit return and I wanted to create another section, all I do is I hit the tab key that brings me into the middle of the line and then I insert a hash mark and then I keep writing. And this is now a new section. And I can see that I've now got three sections here. I've got the first one, section one. Then I've got the untitled section here. Perhaps I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it dialogue. I can do that by just tapping into this and calling it dialogue. Oops. Uh, perhaps with uh, without the double G. And then I've got the third section, which I'm going to call demo. And this is just so that I get a bit of an idea of what happens in those sections. And no one's going to find out what these are called or what I'm labeling them, but it gives me an idea of the points I try to perhaps make in a nonfiction chapter. Or if I'm writing fiction, then this is going to give me an idea of what happens in these sections or in these scenes so much. And um, the beauty of it is that I can now move these things around. Uh, if I wanted to bring the demo section uh, further up before the dialogue all I need to do is hold down the demo section and insert it above the dialogue between section one and the dialogue and if I let go then I can see that my text has changed accordingly so now I've got the first section here uh, that follows the I keep writing section and then we have the dialogue I can also move a section into another chapter entirely. So that's another way that we can do that. And it really helps to build a, uh, like a broad outline of what you want to write about. And then you start writing those sections. It's very interesting to do that. So these headlines are a little bit short. So I'm going to show you a way how to expand that and even uh, write longer texts around these sections that you have a better idea of what you want to maybe put in there. Let me show you how to add another chapter to this thing next. So you go to the bottom of your document. So tab kind of toggles between the beginning of the line and the middle of the line, um, at least the way I've set it up. So at the beginning of the line, this is where you keep typing. So in my case, I'm perhaps going to say chapter two and just uh, hit return. And this is where chapter two begins and eventually ends, I guess same time there. So in order for the program to recognize that this is another chapter, all you have to do is park your cursor on this line, tap into it once, click into it once, and then you have several options for how to do that. I prefer to use this option here, go to the top bar and change the formatting from section text to chapter title. And as soon as you do that, you see that it seemingly disappeared. But what really what happens is that the, the formatting has told stories, hey, a new chapter starts on a new page. So therefore, you scroll further up and the chapter starts on this next page here. Not only does it start on a new page, it also starts kind of a third into the current page. 
we're going to talk about formatting in another video that's uh, kind of you know it's an interest in, intricate subject so we're going to devote a whole video to that how to style these things how to get a different font on there so it's all coming up in another video but so what's happened now is story is this recognizing this as a new chapter heading and it creates another chapter here and now this chapter has one untitled section until I decide I want to have another section and again we do that just like I did above I'm going to hit tab then the cursor goes into the middle of the line I insert a hash mark uh, hit return and then the typing continues and this is my new section so I could uh, I could label this here and say this is the coffee shop scene and this could be, if we stick to fiction writing, this could be now uh, Dave in the office. Um, well, Dave, obviously I need to call my characters as they are. There we go. And um, once again, I can bring Dave in the office before the coffee shop scene, no problem. Then the text changes accordingly, no matter how much text that is, could be like 20 pages and they all would just change in the manuscript. And all you have to worry about then is does the text flow from one section into the other? Other than that, it's just, uh, just you know, it's, it's as easy as that. There's no copying and pasting involved. You can just move these things around. And furthermore, you can move something from the from one chapter into another. So if I'm thinking the demo scene is actually better suited at the beginning of chapter two, then we can do that as well. So now the demo is here, then there's the coffee shop scene, and then there's Dave in the office. So this is how that works. And um, the, uh, the cool thing about this is, this is just kind of a note for you to understand um, what perhaps the title, your internal title of that section is. It's not going to be appearing in your final manuscript or anything. But you may be in a situation where you think, actually, I want to make some notes about what happens to Dave in the office or the coffee shop scene. And you can do that with something called the outline view. So this is very exciting. There are these three little icons up here. So this is now the text view. This is your either your formatted page or it's going to be your draft view or whatever. Then you have this one here, which is the outline view. And you've got this one here, which is the storyboard view. And um, let's go through them one by one. So this one, the outline, if you select that, then you see this very popular American kind of yellow paper with blue lines. It's really, really ugly paper that people use to take notes. And it's very popular over here. I've never really seen it in Europe, but it's one of those things. It's, uh, it's popular over here in America. And uh, what this lets you do is you can, uh, you can expand this now a little bit. So Dave in the office, um, Dave is having a chat with his colleague. Uh, discussing his upcoming breakup with his girlfriend, for example. And you do forget the, the mistypings here. Uh, but you can see that this can now expand into something rather large. And this is not appearing here anymore. So you can do that for every scene. Uh, Dave is trying to break up with Mary. And, you know, successfully or unsuccessfully, you can have as many lines as you want. And uh, you can't move sections from here. You'd have to do that from here. But this will give you a better um, kind of idea of what's going on. And the beauty is that these notes, they don't appear in your text. So if you now head back over to the text, then you see that your actual manuscript text hasn't changed. So this in the outline view is really only those are kind of rough thoughts that you want to bring across in a section. And I believe you can do the same in a chapter. This is all about Dave and Mary, rather than, you know, Dave's job. So as chapter one could perhaps be, um, it's about Dave's job in the MI5, for example. Oops, MI5, there we go. Uh, do forgive the the keyboard mashing and the frequent misspellings. They're just notes here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is this is what you can do with that. And of course, with these little disclosure triangles, you can uh, close this all down. And then of course, there's this next view here, which is kind of familiar to many writers who've been uh, writing things on uh, post-it notes and, and little uh, cards. It's the same outline view, it's the same chapter and section view, but uh, represented as index cards. So um, before we head into this, there's a little formatting 
toolbar at the bottom. If you uh, slide this slider, then the index cards will become smaller or larger. And you can also uh, click this little gear icon here, which uh, shows you under the layout how many exact cards you want to have across and um, you know fit to width, or you want to have three across, two across, whatever you want to do. So uh, double clicking on one of those will get you into each section. And this is now uh, another way of um, well, let's just go into here. This is now another way of looking at your notes. So a uh, demo, you can just double click into there and say, uh, nothing much happens in this scene. Or of course, you know, other things will happen in that scene. This little thing here, by the way, this is a, this is a bit like what you know from a browser. So you can go back to where you came from or go forward into like drill deeper. And this is kind of drill uh, further up. This works in some text documents as well. So it's another little handy navigational help. And just like with the outline, you can move these things around. So you could move that you can just drag this card to the end of it. And then this hap this uh, changes in, in this view as well as a text view accordingly. So you can start by putting Dave in the office first, uh, where he's discussing how he's going to break up with his girlfriend with a colleague. And then we cut to the, the coffee shop scene in which the breakup is actually happening, in which perhaps Dave is trying to break up with Mary, but Mary won't let him. Mary says, no, I don't think we should break up. And, you know, so the the two stay together and he's thinking, well, hang on a minute, I don't want to be with you. What's, what am I going to do now? And um, so you can build up your story that way. One other funky thing about index cards is that you can color them depending on, I don't know, location. So perhaps, you know, the, the office is a scene of which we want to have a different color. So that's, uh, again, on the gear icon, you can pick a color and you can say um, anything that happens in the office is orange, whereas anything that happens in the coffee shop is now gets a different color, perhaps green. You know, I mean, it's kind of up to you if you want to use it. You don't have to. You don't even have to use the index cards if you don't want. You don't have to use the outline view. I've written my book just now, 132,000 words, and I've never used these features for that. But I was aware of them, and I did start outlining the book, and then I found that for me it worked better to just keep writing. So I suppose it's the subject matter that I was writing about that did not require um, index cards. But I've, uh, I've used them on other projects before, and it really is helpful to put some ideas on paper. And of course, it's very exciting to have this um, synced up with your mobile phone so that you have that in your pocket and when you're in the line at the coffee shop and your inspiration strikes and you want to say oh that would be great in that scene you can just put another um, section in there and uh, when you pick it up on your desktop or on your laptop then that that stub is already there so we're going to talk about that in a later video so those are the writing tools that I can think of right now. Perhaps there are others that I uh, haven't quite explored yet. Uh, but yeah, this is this is what it does. And I encourage you to explore all these three tabs. You have them available, by the way. Just one, one other thing. If you do work with the side-by-side -side editor, you do have these available in... Uh, either side. So if we hide the project view, if you have these these two things here, you can have one view in this. So you can have the outline view in here, and then you can have your writing view in here. So the handy thing about that is you can keep writing while you can keep an eye on your outline on the other side. So that's uh, that's very handy to have. Or you can have the uh, uh, the index cards here, and then you can write in here, or the other way around, whatever you like. So you can you know you can change this any any which way you want. So this is a great writing aid. To, to keep an eye on, am I actually still on track? So that is it for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about formatting. So stay on the line for that.